Hello, I'm Dr. Nancy Kuntz, a child neurologist and neuromuscular clinician at Lurie Children's uh, Hospital in Chicago. And I'd like to introduce my colleague, Dr. Vamshi Rao. Hi, Vamshi. Hi, Dr. Kuntz. Uh, I'm Vamshi Rao. I'm a uh, pediatric neuromuscular neurologist also at uh, the Ann and Robert H. Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago. Nice and a pleasure to be here. I'd like to talk about something that um, is very near and dear to our practice, and that is uh, recognizing the signs and symptoms of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Maybe you can start off and, and give us your thoughts. Absolutely. Um, I think the signs and symptoms of Duchenne muscular dystrophy and recognizing these signs and symptoms are key uh, in, in terms of not just the diagnosis, but also early diagnosis. Um, so some of these sort of signs and symptoms that I think we are all, always on the lookout for is uh, a child who has difficulties in terms of getting up from the floor, a child who has difficulties with running or jumping or climbing stairs, all of those sort of signifying that they have weakness in their muscles of the, the lower extremity. Uh, these uh, muscles and the weakness that can be caused by Duchenne can also result in a waddling gait, uh, in a uh, sign that we see in the clinic called a Gower's maneuver, where the child really uh, rides on themselves to stand up, so they use their hands. Uh, they cannot just spring up and stand up as a child their age uh, usually can. As you observe the child, you can also see that their calves are large. Uh, we call it calf pseudo-hypertrophy. We can also, uh, uh, the, the parents really clue us in also on the fact that uh, this child is uh, different from uh, other peers as when they watch this child, they, 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 the child cannot keep up uh, in, at the playground or uh, they have frequent falls uh, that they uh, experience uh, owing to the muscle weakness. So these are definitely some of the signs and symptoms we see, um, but there are some less obvious ones, uh, Dr. Kunz, that you know, we, we sometimes encounter. If you could just go through some of those. Mm. Um, yeah, over time, I've been impressed that um, sometimes well before you can are tempted to make a diagnosis of a clinical muscular dystrophy, there are some other signs that might lead you to the diagnosis of a dystrophin deficiency or Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Um, and there's a wide spectrum of things that relate to cognition and learning and um, speech. Um, I I'm very convinced that at least you know 10 to 12 percent of all children have something a bit unique about um, their learning or their cognition or their executive function or their socialization um, but the fraction of children with dystrophin deficiency who have problems in that area is higher I don't think that we have a um, an exacting number but it's clearly much higher and a lot of times it is a uh, um, a minor part of the child's uh, presentation after they've been diagnosed then when you follow them in a multidisciplinary clinic you see them and um, provide guidance to the family about how to um, uh, work with them and work in the schools to you know keep the children doing well socially and academically um, but in another fraction of the children with dystrophinopathies, it is the presenting symptom. Um, it is the fact that the child really has um, social difficulties, difficulties with shared attention, um, language, ex particularly expressive language delays uh, that actually bring, bring them to attention and get them referred to um, early intervention or developmental pediatrics um, for um, evaluation and intervention. Um, well before <clears throat> consideration has been made for concern about motor difficulties. And so that's something that um, is very important. Now, it doesn't mean that the child should only get attention for their muscle problem, but if there is a dystrophinopathy underlying all of their developmental problems, um, while you're 
simultaneously providing the uh, supports with respect to learning and socialization and language and communication, uh, we don't want to lose time and fail to recognize the problem going on in the muscles because there's a lot of uh, potential to actually lose um, muscle tissue um, to irreversible injury that can't be um, brought back with intervention if you wait too long. So certainly that whole spectrum of uh, delayed language, delayed expressive language, uh, awkward social interaction, autism spectrum, um, uh, are part of um, what sh should make primary care providers think of Duchenne. A second thing that doesn't happen uh, too often, because it's usually not, not incredibly dramatic, um, but it's something that's a clear early clue, and that would be poor linear growth or short stature. Um, natural history studies have shown unequivocally that individuals with dystrophin deficiency are lower in the percentiles for height compared to their age, not, not just the age match peers, but their siblings. So uh, that's one way of trying to um, uh, get some perspective on this because of course there's a broad spectrum of normal heights um, in children. And it's not a matter of, of um, losing percentiles or crossing percentiles, it's a matter of just attaining um, lower uh, percentiles in terms of height uh, compared to siblings and compared to expected. Um, this links into one of the other things that can be a clue that should be followed up um, and that is elevated liver transaminase levels. Um, so moderate levels but you know within uh, two to five times normal range um, of liver transaminases is something that if it persists is worth evaluating. Um, now sometimes uh, when it persists beyond the first encounter, um, children will get referred to a gastroenterologist for a comprehensive evaluation. And I have seen children undergo many, many um, hepatitis titers, um, a lot of metabolic testing, and on occasion even a, a liver biopsy which then would turn out to be completely rock-solid normal um, when in fact uh, the problem is not really the liver but the muscle because uh, some of the same transaminases can come from muscle um, and the way to differentiate that is that the GGT tends not to be elevated um, in these circumstances and the other thing is that the CPK is drastically elevated which would be normal in typical liver problems. So elevated liver um, enzymes picked up for any random um, encounter during an emergency room visit or a diagnostic evaluation of a different kind of medical problem can certainly lead to an early diagnosis of dystrophinopathy. So I think, Dr. Kunza, just to round it up in terms of what to look for, I think there is definitely warning signs or red flags uh, with DMD uh, that we should be aware of. Um, and I think picking these signs early on would lead to an earlier diagnosis. And some of those signs as we sort of went through are any sort of variation in terms of motor development that you see, especially early on, um, not to wait till kids uh, attaining the age of five or six, but if you have a delay in walking, uh, we should do a CK. Um, early on to pick that up. Even children who have delays in uh, attaining motor milestones earlier than one year, I think we should be thinking about it, especially if it is combined with the other signs and symptoms that we just alluded to.